Hi everyone, I'm Francesco from the Android Developer Relations team and welcome to the session Best Practices for Video Apps on Foldables and Large Screens. Nowadays, people use your apps on all kinds of devices. They expect your apps to work seamlessly on different screen sizes and form factors. There are currently hundreds of millions of large screen Android devices in use, and you can support all of them with a single code base by building responsive layouts that adapt to fit phones, tablets, foldables, and laptops. However, when dealing with video applications, there are some additional steps to take in order to improve the user experience, such as handling posture changes in foldable devices and making sure that the UI correctly scales incoming video streams across different window sizes. In this session, we are going to explore some of the best development practices and we will have the chance to learn from two special guests that will share their journey and update their apps for large screens and foldables. Let's start with poster changes. Foldable devices offer users the possibility to do more with their phones, including innovations like the tabletop mode, where the phone is placed on a surface with a hinge in a horizontal position and the folded screen is in a partially open state. This mode is convenient when you want to use the phone hands-free and it's great for watching media, making video calls, taking pictures, and even gaming. A great example that you can see is the optimization that the Google Duo team did on their app to work well on tablets and foldable devices. In this session, we will see how to build a very simple layout that contains a single exoplayer instance that automatically resizes during posture changes with this nice animation. A simple implementation would be, for example, an activity where the root element is a motion layout that contains three child views, the video player, the control panel, and a guideline. You may already notice some new features that have been added in constraint layout to help manage foldable devices. Let's see them in detail. There is a new mechanism to inject runtime values using a shared value and a new element called the reactive guy, which is an invisible UI component that positions itself automatically when a shared value changes. Note the attribute layout constraint guide n. This is the value you want to change to move the guideline. Since the reactive guide is horizontal, this attribute represents the distance between the guideline itself and the bottom of the parent. With that layout defined, it's now time to make your app fold aware. Jetpack Window Manager comes to help with this task. After it is initialized, the library allows you to listen for layout changes by collecting the flow exposed by Window Info Repository. Every time you get a new layout information, you can query the display features and check the device postures. A device can be used in tabletop mode if the folding feature state is half opened and the orientation is horizontal. When this is the case, you can calculate the relative position of the fold and move the reactive guide to that position, while moving it to zero otherwise. Remember that in this case, zero means zero distance from the bottom of the screen. Now let's see some real-world use cases of successful layouts for foldables. I'm going to leave the word to Will Chan from Zoom to learn how they took advantage of the new foldable form factors to improve the UX of their app. Hi, I'm Will, and today I want to give you an overview of what Zoom has done to bring our app to foldable devices. At Zoom, our goal is to make video communications frictionless, and we're always looking for ways to better connect people. Over the last year, we've noticed more people using larger screen devices on Android. So we wanted to make sure these users have the best experience possible when in a Zoom meeting. One of the opportunities we saw for improving the experience on larger screen devices was foldables. Designing for foldable devices enabled us to scale our mobile UI to address our users' needs no matter what size device they use. The foldable form factor itself allows for interesting new applications. Many of these new foldable devices can sit on a table in a tabletop mode that allows for hands-free interactions, which can be especially useful in video communication. For example, users can still be seen in a Zoom meeting while having the freedom to walk around a room. 
For this experience, when a user folds a device, we adjust the Zoom Meeting UI so that all the controls are on the bottom half of the screen, while the video of other participants and self-view are displayed on top. This creates an intuitive video conferencing experience and provides users with a pixel-perfect UI. This way, we prevent the crease line on the screen from obstructing faces of video participants. To accomplish this, we use Window Manager and Constraint Layout. Window Manager allows us to easily switch interfaces when the folding state of the device changes. And by adopting Constraint Layout, we reduce the complexity of our layout logic while allowing us greater flexibility to design more responsive UIs. We also saw better rendering performance, which helps when there are more complex layouts. We are pleased to offer users with foldable devices a new, convenient way to use Zoom. And we look forward to integrating more Android libraries to help deliver great video communications experiences on Android. Back to you, Francesco. Thanks a lot, Will. It's always exciting to see products that care so much about optimizing the user experience in every scenario. Now let's move to the second part of this session. I already mentioned that another important point is to adapt video streams to different aspect ratios. Two streams maybe are coming from your camera or from someone else's, from a file or from the web. Maybe a user is sharing the screen with you, but their device has a different orientation or aspect ratio than yours. If your app does not handle two cases, it may result in images distorted or with the wrong rotation. Just like we did it before for poster changes, let's consider the simplest scenario with a single video stream coming from your camera and being previewed on a texture view. And let's explore some best practices to avoid ending up destroying Leonardo's masterpiece. What you just saw can happen because by default, the preview will be scaled to fit the whole surface. This behavior may cause scaling problems since the X and the Y axis may be scaled by different factors. Also, by default, the texture view does not handle display rotations. So it's up to the client application to correctly scale and rotate the video stream with a multi-step transformation. In particular, we will need to scale back the preview to its original size, applying the right scaling and then handling the rotations with a few adjustments. Let's start with rotations. Camera sensors and camera previews aren't always in the same orientation on Android devices. Camera apps generally assume a fixed relationship between the orientation of the device and the aspect ratio of the camera preview. But these assumptions are being challenged by new form factors such as foldable devices and display modes such as multi-window and multi-display. Here we can see a code snippet that computes the rotation required in degrees to transform the camera sensor output orientation to the device's current orientation. As you can see, we want the rotation to be clockwise or counterclockwise, depending if the camera is facing the front or the back of the screen. And then we basically just calculate the difference between the two orientations with some math to make sure that value is always between 0 and 360. Then we need to set the size of the texture view to be identical to the preview size chosen. This is important to avoid the default buffer size to be overwritten. Note that at this step, the preview can still be stretched out. Finally, we calculate the scale factors for the X and the Y axis to bring the preview back to the original size. And then we apply the desired scale. In this case, I'm using the minimum value, so the picture will probably look smaller than the viewfinder with black bars at the borders. Keep in mind that this code shows the general procedure, but does not cover all the edge cases. For an extensive documentation and handling camera previews, I'd recommend checking out the links at the end of this video. So, this was a simple scenario but there are applications out there that handle multiple video streams like a charm. Let's spend some time with the LumaTouch team to listen to their experience in bringing their app to Android and Chrome OS devices. Hi, I'm Chris Damaris, co-founder and head of engineering at LumaTouch. 
we're really excited to bring the powerful multi-track video editing experience of LumaFusion to Android and Chrome OS. We're especially happy it'll be available in so many schools where Chromebooks have become an integral part of the learning and creative experience. We partnered with an amazing engineering team at Solveig, and they're here to talk about their experience, including some of the challenges they overcame and the tools and resources they used to make this development a success. We have been entrusted by LumaTouch to build a great video editing application, LumaFusion, and we have faced a number of interesting development challenges and learned a lot while creating the application. The main thing we did to assess feasibility was to create an initial proof of concept video editing app on the Android, which is now available as an open source project that you can check out today. The demo app reads four different video clips, applies scaling, rotation, and transparency effects, and ensures smooth playback and correct export. One of the most complicated challenges we faced was initializing four 4K media codecs at the same time. We tried to use a software decoding solution, but performance was not adequate. So we switched to Android's media codecs API and Exaplayer, which showed a good performance. We started experimenting with different codex initialization params and found a balance between performance and stability. The input files in the demo cover a variety of media files and effects, from 720p videos to heavy 4K videos and 60 frames per second. This will be a great resource for developers looking to get started with multi-track editing and effects on Android and Hermes. We were pleasantly surprised with the fact that adapting the application for different device families has not taken too much time. Despite the fact that there are a lot of devices on the market, uh, the app platform is relatively uh, consistent across device configurations, which helps speed up for our development. We were able to overcome the performance variations issue because of the ability to configure the default LumaFusion setup to work well for a given device. For example, we can limit the ability to work with 4K videos on devices with lower performance, thus allowing it to run as users expect on a wide range of devices. We optimized encoding for both low-level and high-end devices to achieve the best performance. There are two code paths. First, if the device is able to initialize all the required codecs with the highest performance setting, we do that. And uh, if initialization fails in the first approach, we implemented a fallback mechanism to calculate initialization parameters that work. We were initially concerned about the performance for multi-tracks editing on the wide range of devices, but we discovered uh, that even some mid-range devices are able to process five uh, 4K media at the same time. Another thing that uh, was difficult to manage was seeking within a user timeline, especially with multiple high-resolution tracks and advanced effects. We developed an adaptive algorithm that finds an optimal balance between closed and exact seek. There was work we had to do for different screens. By using scalable graphics for UI elements and by having a flexible design for UI layout, we were able to accommodate different screen sizes, including the special layouts for foldable postures. Lumetash has an outstanding UX experience and we are working to make sure we deliver the best large screen possible to Hermes users. We are proud of what we have done and grateful for the opportunity to work on such a challenging project. Very nice. It's great to see so many apps coming to Android and Chrome OS with a tailored UI. In the description, you can find the links to join the LumaFusion beta and to check out the source code of the demo app. Time is running out and we need to recap what you learned today. You can find additional information on poster changes, adaptive layouts, and much, much more on the official page developer.android.com slash large screens. I can't wait to see what you will build and thanks for watching.